Welcome to Peace Vision. We've been laughing, so um, we should do that again, but we won't. This is David Essel. He's why I'm laughing. We are a portal for positive change, and today we're actually going to talk about something pretty serious, and it's called addiction. And David is here to not only let us know how we fall into that trap, but how do we crawl out of it, and what is the number one reason for addiction, David? The number one reason for addiction, and this is what surprises everyone, is not what you think. It's not your genetics. And I know we get a lot of pushback like that because people love to think, it's not my fault that I can't stop drinking. It's not my fault that I have these hangovers every weekend. I have the gene, but that's not true at all. The number one cause of all addictions, John, is the fact that we have not learned healthy coping skills on how to deal with emotions in life. That might be boredom, anger, rage, low self-confidence, resentments, low self-esteem. In other words, victimhood, martyrdom, right? Every emotion that occurs to the human being, when you know how to cope with it, you don't become an addict to sugar or alcohol or nicotine or opiates or anything else, television. You know, there's no addictions when you're able to cope with your emotions. And let me go through these again because this surprises a lot of people and I'm gonna add one that might even be more surprising. Excitement, celebration. You know, we use all of these reasons, John, as a way for us to get out of our element and to numb our experience or with excitement to lift the experience. But is it always unhealthy and can some addictions actually be okay for us? Well, the addictions that are okay for us, you have to, I'll give you the definition of an addiction. A true addiction is a return, John, to any thought, substance, behavior, or person that is unhealthy for us. So if you keep returning to a thought, behavior, substance, or person that's unhealthy, you're in an addiction. Wow, and I think one of the biggest problems that people have right now is they have relatives, friends, people, this opioid crisis is horrendous, right? Is, Taking yeah. loved ones everywhere. Yeah. And they don't know what to do, to, how do I get this person help? What are the some practical advice you can give us? Yeah. If we have a friend or someone in that situation doesn't know what to do. How do I get my brother, nephew, stepson help? It's the ultimate question, John, in the world because you know most of us enable our loved ones. Most of us will give them rent money and cash because they're hurting and they're gonna use that rent money for their substance of choice or if they're a gambler, their behavioral addiction of choice. The number one thing that we can do is to sit and listen and to ask them, how can I help you? That's number one. What can I do to help you out of this spiral? But when, after that, the only other option you really have is to stop enabling, make sure that you're not buying them alcohol to come over if they struggle with alcohol because it's their birthday or some celebration. And then the last option, if one and two doesn't work, would be intervention, John, where you actually get a professional to come in and sit down maybe with you and your wife and your adult child or your young child, or maybe it's gonna be you and your child and your wife who has the addiction. You know, intervention is usually the last step as a counselor that we recommend. The first couple is let's build a friendship. Let's talk. Let's ask where their struggle is, where their pain is, and let's see if they have any interest at all in healing. But where the rubber hits the road is when the family finally says, this is not gonna end well unless we get involved. Yeah. And the intervention, but there's help, right? You can, where can you go? There are people you can call. Oh yeah. And where would you recommend starting? Yeah, the very first thing you do is go online and Google intervention specialists in your area. Um, you could call women's shelters and ask them for, do they have intervention specialists? Because many of them do have them on staff. You can call your local churches, synagogues, temples and ask them. The number one place I would say though is go online to a, a website like psychologytoday.com which has a list of all the counselors in your area who might be doing intervention work. Uh, you know, you had mentioned something just so crucial. The enabling process is the one that really kills us. Tough love is the other step that people have to take. And all tough love stuff says is, I'm not going to enable you. So when you call for money, I'm gonna say no, but if you wanna come over for food, I have sandwiches for you. When they call for money, you say, you know, I don't have money to loan you, but I'd be more than willing to go into a counselor with you and sit down and talk and see how we might be able to help you. 
John, these are the steps that are crucial when you have a loved one battling with addiction. And the other thing, I just want to repeat this is so important. Genetics plays a tiny role in something like alcoholism, but it isn't the reason someone starts drinking. The reason I started drinking at 12 was peer pressure. The reason I kept going at 13 on and wanting to expand into drugs was because I was a very angry, unhappy child. When we finally got to the core years later, it took me years to get sober, that I wasn't coping with my own emotions, my frustration, anger, boredom, et cetera, that's when we were able to finally get clean. But if I had people enabling me, dropping off alcohol because it was my birthday, I could still be an alcoholic today. Thank God we have help available. Well, thank you so much for the great wisdom, really. I think that's going to help a lot of people because I think so many people are just struggling not knowing what do I do. Exactly, And John. wanting to do something. Yeah, exactly, yeah, John. Yeah. David Essel, everyone. He'll be back to help us get through the day and bring more peace into our lives. Thanks for joining us today.